In June 2013, the practice in which I work as an associate made the leap of faith and joined the pilot programme. Professor Jimmy Steele's vision promised us time with our patients and to be acknowledged for the hard work we put into prevention. We were excited to move away from the monster of the UDA contract. In the first two years, we're not all bad. The pathway approach, together with preventative ICM appointments, did get positive feedback from both dentists and patients. Then April 2015 arrived and the introduction of the new and improved prototype programme. But unfortunately, the return of the UDA. We quickly came to the realisation that a capitation target and a UDA target do not work together. In fact, access and activity work against each other. I was told by contract reform team, don't do the ICMs, increase your recall intervals. In other words, don't do prevention, just see more people. At this point, I had a five month waiting list for a filling and a growing list of patient complaints. The associates where I work are all long-standing members of staff, but each one of us was becoming more demoralised more disheartened and the discussion amongst us was whether we should leave the practice or even leave dentistry. The heartbreaking decision was made to leave the contract reform process on the 31st of March this year. This was decided for the good of the patients and for every member of staff. We didn't choose to return to the UDA because we think it's better. It's definitely not. We lost the access target instead because it was unattainable and unsustainable. The prototype currently is no different from the UDA contract. It's target driven with no consideration on the oral health needs of the patient and no thought to the future sustainability of the profession. I know this isn't anything new to any of you. It's been a slow paced nine years, but we can't keep doing the same things and expecting a different outcome. We need a realistic capitation target. Maybe we need a pathway for those wanting regular care and a pathway for those wanting urgent care. We definitely need UDAs to be banished and a different measure of activity considered. Contract reform is essential for the future of dentistry and for an associate like me. Our patients deserve this and so do we as dentists. And there are people in this room that can make positive changes happen and we need change. That is why I asked conference to support the motion for a reinvigoration of contract reform. Thank you. Good afternoon, conference. Um, we know that the clinical model within the prototypes works but we're very aware that the business model does not, and this must be addressed as a matter of urgency. Some prototype practices have had to pour in significant financial resources to make it work. Some have handed the contract back as unworkable. It is concerning to note that representatives from NHS England and the Department of Health do not appear to listen to GDPC and only ever refer to the improved clinical pathway and patient outcomes, but totally ignore the morale of the dental teams that provide the care. The NHS dentistry budget is hemorrhaging money, with clawback running at well over £80 million. Patient charges increasing year on year, well above inflation. Contracts being handed back and, of course, the workforce recruitment issues. We are, after all, independent dentists that voluntarily contract with the NHS to provide services. So the reformed contract must be an attractive proposition. It's so important that practices can flourish, provide quality NHS dental care in a working environment that supports the special relationship between dental teams and their patients. So please, conference, please support this motion and motion 3A. Thank you.
Siobhan Grant would like to speak to motion th three, uh, also proposing motion 3B. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Chair of Conference, I would like to speak for the motion. With the exception of fluoridated areas, I could display a map of social deprivation and overlay it with a map of poor oral health. Maps would be almost identical. The current contract fails these patients with high needs, as it is financially disadvantageous to offer this group the comprehensive care that dentists wish to provide. A dentist at lunchtime told me he loses money every time he undertakes a molar endodontics. One of my LDCs told me he was faced with the uncomfortable decision of accepting high needs Syrian immigrants or facing clawback. This further widens inequalities in oral health. I would urge you to vote for the motion. So motion three is for England only, English only um, LDCs to vote on this one. So all those in favor of motion three, please raise your card. And all those against the motion, abstentions. That's, thank you, Mr. Returning Officer. Thank you very much, conference. For motion 3A, this is open to all LDCs across the UK. All those in favour of motion 3A? And all those against? Any abstentions? That is unanimous, I believe. Thank you. Motion 3B. This is an England-only vote, so only England LDCs can vote on this. All favour, please raise your cards. All those against? Any abstentions? That looks unanimous as well. Thank you, conference. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, conference. I was going to introduce this motion reflecting on talking about low morale and recruitment crises and the way contract reform has gone. And I think all the speakers before me have done that in enough detail and more, perhaps more eloquently so than I would. And I support everything that they have said. The motion that I bring before you is proposing some sort of change now until contract reform is ready. I propose that change is needed in an interim period, a change that can support providers and performers who are straining and burning out under a yoke of an unyielding and inflexible incumbent contract. The motion for an interim contract proposes changes to be made to the existing contract, simple workable solutions, changes that can relieve the pressures of the current system, ameliorate the UDA treadmill, address areas where patient need currently outstrips demand and remunerate more accordingly for extensive treatment or for more challenging and complex patient groups. And the methods are straightforward. Redirect clawback back into NHS dentistry, not a saving for NHS England or the Treasury, but spend it where it was intended. The BDA have suggested granularity within bands for more complex dentistry. I would absolutely support that could be readily implemented within our current contract and in so doing, pay dentists appropriately for more complex treatment, in-depth extensive treatment plans. At the other end of the spectrum, have prevention recognised as remunerable activity? And we've got a precedent with a note for the avoidance of doubt with the Dental Check by One campaign where there's no discernible activity in doing fillings or talking 
delivering positive messages, and that's worth a UDA, and I think it really should be, and that should be enshrined in the contract. Look at flexible commissioning approaches that use targeting of existing finance or clawback money to allow more niche services. We've got great examples of urgent care and enhanced urgent care in practice prevention, residential oral care schemes that are not necessarily just a UDA value or a target, but offset against an existing UDA allowance to give professionals time to do those more niche things. An interim contract should absolutely not undermine the work of contract reform, but nor should we seek to hasten it just out of frustration and dissatisfaction with the status quo, for I fear in so doing, we end up with another NHS contract as bad as the current one. Give contract reform the time it needs. Give, let's give credit to those people who have worked very hard, very selflessly, and at personal and emotional expense, financial expense, putting that hard work into contract reform. An interim contract won't make everything better. There's no delusion about that. It won't fix the fundamental flaws of a UDA-centred activity-dominated system, but there are good working examples out there of how the system can be improved. The emphasis should be on interim. The UDA is going out the door, but let's make more complex activity and prevention more fairly remunerated. Thank you, conference. Thank you, Sam. I'd like to call on Dave Cottam to speak against the motion. Actually, I'm not speaking against what Sam said, and I just want to clarify that completely um, by what he means by an interim dental contract. There needs to be more money for this current contract. We all know we need to be paid adequately for high needs, molar endo, just to give two examples. And it's not beyond the will of man, should they wish to do this, to make this current UDA system more granular in, this, in the interim stage by having bands 1A, 2A, 3A. But there needs to be more funding for those to work because otherwise it just comes out of existing funding, which means reduced prices for other activity. Quite clearly, this business plan is not working. I really want to just stand up and say the department needs to get its act together. It needs to do more now. You'll hear about Eric Rooney's um, evaluation report, which has finally come out a couple of weeks ago. There are 17 recommendations, I think, and the department are doing nothing, nothing at all, to heed these recommendations, both financially and an appropriate number of Wave 4 pilots. We need to get this right. It's for the best for our colleagues now and for the future. So I support everything Sam said, but I'm just mindful that we don't want the department to come in with a half-hearted plan that will ruin our long-term negotiations. Thank you. I call on Ian Gordon to speak for the motion. Afternoon conference. About four years ago, I proposed a motion along similar lines, which was relatively narrowly defeated and was probably the right thing to do because we would have been criticized as a profession if we hadn't engaged. Last year, I proposed a motion which was even more narrowly defeated, um, actually calling for an end to cooperation with the department and an end of our engagement with contract reform. That was about as stupid as Cameron calling for an election, um, a referendum on leaving the EU. And I would have probably looked as devastated as uh, um, Boris Johnson would have looked had I won that, because it would have been the wrong thing to do as well. We would have been criticised. So we've got to carry on trying to engage. Henrik said in a, an article a couple of days ago that this is going to take years, I think he said, and we need something now to deal with problems like molar endo. Um, I disagree with Dave Cottam that it needs more money. More money would be great. There is money still in the um, in dentistry, it's just clawed back and it's removed. And the proposal of adding more bands and making the contract easier to deliver would mean that those, that callback wouldn't happen because more UDAs would be easier to earn and it wouldn't actually need more money. More money would be great, but we could actually spend the budget we've got. 
So we've got to carry on with reform. We've got to try and find something that works. It probably means scrapping everything that's been done so far, because apart from the clinical pathways, I don't think it's going to ever work. Uh, so it has to complete rethink. But let's try and have something now, because we've had four years with just three bans. We could have actually had it easier for the last four years if we'd done something then. So please vote for the motion. Thank you, Ian. I'd like to call on Henrik Overgaard Nielsen to the motion. I absolutely share your frustration about the present contract, and I also absolutely share your frustration about the slow pace of the reform contract. I also agree with the motion that we need to reduce pressures on the NHS dental workforce. There's no discussion about that. That is what we are working on. That is what we are trying to do. Um, there were other, uh, other things have been said about flexible commissioning. Redirection of clawback, I think, is really, really important. The problem I have here is that we need to clarify what it is we want about uh, more granularity in the UDAs. If we are talking about more money, or rather clawback money, going back into the contract and paying more, for example, for Mola Endo, then I absolutely agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. What I don't want, and I think that is where Ian and I disagree on that one and the EU referendum. <laughs> what I don't want, because I have proposed this on a number of occasions, I have to say NSS England and Department of Health are probably fed up with me proposing it, right? That we should be paid more for certain things. Because the question I'm asked every single time from them is, okay, what do you want to be paid less for doing? I don't want us to end up in a discussion whether we want 0 0.9 UDAs for an exam to pay for doing Mola Endo. One, because I think it's a waste of time, and two, because I think we're never going to agree on it anyway. And three, actually, because I think that the government needs to put more money, and particularly the clawback money, back into NHS dentistry. So, if we are not talking about discussing being paid less for certain things, but we are talking about putting clawback money back into the UDA system, then I'm absolutely in favour of this. If we are talking about having to discuss being paid less for certain things, then I'm definitely against it. So I will be positive because the other thing I also, I'll be positive and believe that the granularity means that we put more money into it. But I'm also aware that this is fiddling around the edges and what we don't want is for the Department of Health and NSS England to get off the hook in doing something serious about the contract because for the long term fiddling around with the UDAs is not a way forward. We need a reform that makes all these issues about the stress for the workforce, the problems that we are facing and the high needs patients that are not welcome in the practice. The contract reform needs to solve that and it actually needs to solve it now. Thank you very much. Thank you. I still have a number, sorry. I still have a number of speakers wanting to speak to this. I'm just conscious of time, um, but can the next few speakers be quite brief? Um, so I'll call on Duncan Thomas to speak against the motion. Thank you. I will be very pleasingly brief. Um, I'm going to ask you to vote against this motion simply because we have a contract reform process now. We don't have a new, uh, a new contract. It's a case of just reforming the existing contract. The Department of Health has been cl clear about that. They've also uh, been effectively moribund in the process. There are lots of issues with this new reform contract. Tinkering around with the UDA system, I think, will only create more problems. We need, as I feel that Henrik said earlier on, we need to, to object to that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we've got the order. Uh, I'd like to call on Eddie Crouch to speak for the motion. Um, several years ago, when uh, Ian asked us to look at this uh, polishing of uh, the UDA, um, I won't say it again, um, uh, but 
I, I perceive this is a different motion. Uh, I, I was at a meeting the other night with 15 other LDC chairs and uh, we were discussing sort of uh, clawback in our area and not hitting 100% and not even hitting 96%. And it, it's clear it's getting harder and harder and harder to hit that every year. Um, if we are talking about not an alternative contract reform process, but an alternative to the current failing system, then I am in favour of this motion. I'd like to call on Paul McCrory, who is going to uh, speak against the motion. Hello. Uh, I'd like to speak against the motion because I believe that there are risks in uh, jumping the gun on a GDPC negotiated contract. Um, the concerns that I have relate to uh, local care organisations or alliances, I think that some of them are now calling themselves. And I believe that if we give the um, Department of Health any opportunity to, or NHS England, any opportunity to introduce variations, um, there may be, they may uh, use that as a method of transferring a degree of control, uh, direct or indirect, to these um, local care organisations or alliances. And when, if that happens, then CCGs, uh, who are party to uh, these um, alliances, and others will start to influence dentistry in a way which I think would potentially not be uh, in, a, um, in a manner which we would wish to see uh, the direction of travel be in the future. So that's it. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Nick Stoles is going to speak against the motion. Conference, I've, I've got a bit of a problem with this motion because it's an amalgamation of things I like and it's an amalgamation of things I don't like. But if we're looking at the headline of this motion, it, it, it seems to state that we're going to approve an interim uh, contract proposal. Now, do we really want that? Because if we, if we do, are you guys going to be happy about having something introduced like that without any piloting? Because how are we going to test to see whether that model will work and we guys won't be losing even more money? The second thing uh, is, will that then become the new contract without it being tested? And I think we've got to really think about these things before we agree to it. I completely agree with some of the sentiments that follow that, but I'm really concerned about the headline, rate, headline figure that says that we should introduce an interim contract. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to call Mark Green from North Yorkshire to speak for the motion. I'll be very brief. Are we not at a crisis point now? And how long can we la let this con convoluted experiment go on? It's agreed to be failing, so we've got to have to look at a new one. How long is that going to take? What we're asking for is no new money, just making the UDAs easier to get. The contract money is the same. It was 81.5 million this year in clawback. It's giving it a little bit easier to make everyone hitting the 96 to 100 percent. So there isn't any clawbacks. So it's not new money. We're not asking the government for a lot to do. We're not saying this is it. It was just tinkering, messing on with it. It's not. It's something needs to. Peter Ward from the BDA would like to speak to the motion. I'm good on amalgam, yeah? Right, amalgam. Um, 
I, I'm sorry to stand here um, when it's an elected officers event, but I do feel I've just not got to draw your attention to something that's been said that has caused me some concern. Uh, and it's the concern about the suggestion about recycling clawback. Um, uh, clawback is now affecting something approaching one in three practitioners every year and represents £100 million pounds worth of, of recovered monies to NHS England. Uh, and that is paid by individual dentists who, by and large, have worked very hard throughout the year and have spent their time conscientiously treating patients, but have done so in a way that doesn't fit an ill-formed and bizarre payment methodology. I'm rather concerned that in suggesting that the monies that those individuals have left, sometimes at considerable hardship, should then be legitimised by recycling it to fund other work, See, serves to underwrite the legitimacy of what I consider to be a wholly onerous and I I inappropriate amount of source of income. So please, can I ask you in your considerations, please don't legitimise the reuse of ill-gotten gains. motion thank you this is an England only motion so I'd like to ask for all those in favor of motion four to raise a card Peter <laughs> all those against please raise a card oh I think we need a count okay can the BDA staff get ready please no no just do it by hand. Just, right. so, so, you've got counters around the room. You've got counters around the room, and they will come to you with their total. They've got a number of things. So, in favour for. Okay, conference. So, just waiting while the BDA staff get ready to do the count. So, all those in favour of motion four, please hold their, their hands up, please. Keep them up. It's England only, yes. Okay, can the counters let me know when they're ready? Are we done? Thumbs up, yeah. Okay. All those against the motion, please. Can the counters, when they've counted, can they give me a, a thumbs up sign that they're, they're ready to go? Okay. Are we there? Okay, and all abstentions, can you please hold your cards up? Okay. As you've heard this afternoon, Contract reform in Wales has undergone a range of guises and fortunately is different to what's happening in England. Our latest guise, as Clare has told us, involves practices for 100% of their contract value having to do 90% of their UDAs and then this extra 10% of time completing data on patient need and risk. We do not want it to stop there. We do not want there to be stagnation in the system. We want to create a contract that empowers dentists, that make dentists say, yes, I want to work in the NHS, and not be target monkeys, not sit there doing things because they have to do it, doing the right thing at the right time for the right patient. 
And to keep it brief, I call upon my colleagues from Wales to support me in this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Russell Gidney from Gwent, speaking for the motion. Uh, afternoon conference. Um, I just want to add a little bit to support the motion. Um, for most of you, I think, until about half an hour ago, um, you might have known where Wales was because you flew over it as you came over here. That was probably about as much as you knew about what was happening in Wales, that even anything different was happening in there. Um, Colette's doing a lot of work. I'm one of the pilot practices in, in Wales, and we're using the, the, the form to, to gather the needs and risk assessment. The, the work that we're doing is actually making a difference to how we're working. I want to support a, a motion that calls for the, the contract reform to carry on, not from the, the kind of slightly pessimistic, slightly downtrodden English point of view. What I hope to see is no. that actually in, in another year's time, two years' time, that you'll be looking to Wales and saying, actually, this is what can be done when we get the right engagement, we get the right support to do it. So when we get the vote from the, the four people on the table there and maybe another couple around, I hope that this does move forward and actually we can look to see some sort of change that will help the UK in general. Thank you. So we've no more speakers to the motion. We can go for the vote. This is a Wales only vote. So all you English people, keep your hands down. So all those in favour of the motion, do you need the staff, Peter, or...? All those against? That's a unanimous vote. Good afternoon, uh, Chair, and good afternoon, Conference. Um, well, my thunder has rather been stolen by all the, uh, all the other speakers on this uh, notion of uh, clawback. Um, the, the numbers, we, we really have to deal with this as a matter of urgency because there's an exponential increase in the lack of funding, uh, the loss of funding for, for NHS dentistry. In London uh, alone last year, the loss was 7 million, and for England it was um, coming up to 85 million. I mean, um, where's the money going? It's satisfying the ambitions of the administrators with their 20% savings targets. And when they find it's nice and easy to get their hands in our pockets, they'll just keep on doing it. Um, as uh, Stephen Fales really eloquently put it, the NHS is Hem dentistry is hemorrhaging money. Um, it's, this money should be ring-fenced. It's there to provide access for patients. It's not to satisfy other ambitions. So I would urge conference to support this motion. Thank you. Have we any speakers to the motion? Then we shall go to the vote. And this, this is England only. So. All those in favour, nice and high. All those against, abstentions. Thank you, that's been carried. Conference, um, I want to outline a series of events that culminated on the 4th of November 2015 with a hospital doctor, Hadiza Bawagaba, being convicted of manslaughter through gross negligence. But before I go further, let's not forget that a little boy, Jack Adcock, died as a result of the events three years previously. Dr. Bawagaba had just returned from maternity leave and was on her first shift as a paediatric registrar. 
She was the only doctor on the children's assessment unit with the SHO being unavailable and her consultant in another hospital several miles away. The hospital computers had failed, which meant that test results were delayed by several hours and she was trying to manage a workload due to be covered by many more clinicians than just her. Mistakes were made, culminating in the death, death of young Jack. A real tragedy and fortunately not something we're likely to be responsible for in dentistry. So why have I rehearsed this sad story? The mistakes occurred due to a combination of system failures, lack of ancillary staff and an expectation to undertake a workload that can simply not be managed. Every day of the week, we are seeing precisely the same problems in NHS general dental practice. The workload is placing colleagues in impossible positions. They have to undertake an increasing number of UDAs with the speed of the treadmill increasing annually. So it's hardly surprising that many are leaving offering suffering from stress related problems directly attributed to these pressures. Many who don't leave are physically affected by the risks they feel they take by working faster than they can manage. They feel they're only one mistake from a fitness to practice invitation. And what of system failures? East Anglia can't be the only part of the country that suffers from a lack of support staff. That is unless you make a mistake, in which case there seem to be more than enough. It's not getting easier. Clawbacks rising every year, which suggests the hill is getting steeper to climb. It's time to realize that the environment we work in has to change. Not a tinkering at the edges, but a root and branch reform, not just with the dental contract, but the entire structure of NHS England for the sake of our colleagues, our profession, and our patients before something more catastrophic occurs. Conference, I'd urge you to support this motion. Okay, we have um, Dominic Kierwander from Cornwall and Devon speaking for the motion. Good afternoon, conference. We're all in it together. That's what Mr. Cameron told us, wasn't it? Dentists have seen their pay cut by 35%. We've seen our expenses go up by 1,085%. There's total apathy uh, to the death and suicide rates with dentists. We recently saw a Welsh, uh, a Welsh civil servant take his own life and there was uproar in the media. With dentistry, there's just a meh, just another dentist who takes their own life. I don't like uh, using the example of motor vehicles of dentistry, but when we're told to fix something, we have to decide where the money comes from. It's like saying we're going to break the, break the steering on the car to repair the brakes. It's a ridiculous suggestion. It's putting forward the idea that it's putting forward the, 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 the idea that it's our fault that there isn't the funding there. It's not our fault. We're asking for the funding. What is the cause of poor quality patient care and stress in dentistry? It's lack of funding. Conference, please support this motion. Uh, next to speak for the motion is Paul McCrory. Yes, um, I submitted an FOI to the General Dental Council uh, following up on a paper written by uh, Paul Batchelor. Um, the, the paper had a table in it, table number four, which had, was curtailed in the number of years that it covered. The, the paper itself covered 10 years. Um, and I suspected that this particular table um, had, had uh, figures which might be slightly embarrassing in terms of uh, retention figures. When I received the uh, response to the FOI, uh, it, it turned out to be the case that the number of retentions, uh, the, the number of dentists who were leaving, uh, who had originally registered in 2007, was increasing over the mo most recent period of sort of more onerous regulation by the General Dental Council. Um, I, I think that we should take a very serious look at the potential damage to the workforce that um, very heavy-handed regulation, especially of younger practitioners, is. I'd recommend anyone to go on to the, uh, the GDC um, web pages and look at the FOI responses and see whether they can take a look at the figures. Perhaps you'll have a different opinion to mine, but I, from what I read uh, on, on the response and the calculations that I've done, it does look that there was a sharp increase 
in the number of dentists, young dentists, leaving uh, the register at around the time whenever we had the, the very, very onerous and aggressive, I would say, um, uh, regulatory uh, burden placed on us in recent years. Thank you. Thank you. That seems to be all the speakers we have there, so we'll go for a vote. This is a UK vote. Um, all LDCs can uh, show their opinion on this one. So, all those in favour of motion seven? All those against? Any abstentions? Unanimous? Yeah. Thank you.